magnify the Lord just for about another 15 seconds. Would you just ignite this place with praise? Would you give a great shout, a great hand clap of appreciation? And with a crown of thorns, he became our king forever. He did what none of us could, and he's seated in glory today. 
listening for the praises and the glory of his people. He is so worthy. Turn to somebody this evening and say, I'm thankful to serve Jesus. Never will I let a rock cry out in my place. He's worthy of all the praise. In Jesus' name. Great to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for joining us on our midweek service. Great things happen at this church. We are so thankful to be here tonight. Got a couple of announcements for you. Uh, we have our first Section 9 Youth Rally this Friday night. We'll be in Lakeland, Florida with Pastor Joe Campatella. And I know he has ministered to this church many times, and we are so thankful that he made room in his schedule to be with us Friday night. So our young people, they're not going to be the same after this Friday night. Amen. So make it a priority. We'll be leaving at 5 p.m. Uh, the bus will be heading out. I know it'll be a little tight on schedules, but it is in Lakeland. Traffic is always up in the air on Friday night. So let's try to get here as soon as we can. $10 for gas. Uh, there is free food afterwards, but we are asking. We're doing something a little unique. Uh, this youth rally, we're asking everybody to bring $10. A $10 offering. We've promoted it through the section. We are anticipating a great sacrificial offering that we do every year. And we are just asking that you guys would be a part. So make sure that young people, youth, hyphen, that you guys go. Bring $10 for gas, but also bring something to put in the offering. Amen? If you want to be a part, if there's a baby dedication at the end of this month, April 28th. So if you want to be a part of that, please see Sister Bianca so that you guys can get your, you get your name in there. Photos, get your guys scheduled in for that. And we also want to welcome James right over here to my left. James, thank you for joining us tonight. You found a great church to call home. We just ask that whatever you need, that you would find it tonight in the presence of the Lord. He's been so faithful, and he's, the Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So let's go cheerfully to the Lord tonight, for he has been so good to us. We want to give tonight to him. Would you help me pray over the offering? Lord, we love you. We bless your holy name. You are th we are so thankful to be in your place. We give thanks and praise and thanksgiving unto you because you are so worthy of it. Lord, would you touch the gift and the giver tonight? You have been so gracious. You've been so good. You have poured out blessings on this church. You have poured out blessings on these families. Tonight, Lord, we just want to give a little bit. We want to be obedient to your word. And if we will give what you ask, God, you will open up the windows of heaven. There will be a blessing that there be not enough room to contain. And we believe in your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, Jesus, we worship you.
this world. You're stronger than anything in this world, God. Oh, God, you have given me the strength to stand against my adversaries. You have given me the strength. You have given me the courage because you are right behind me. You are right beside me, Lord Jesus. And you have given authority to speak life where there is death. You've given us power over every circumstance. God, when I speak your name, chains will break and everything must change. We declare and we decree with all. If you believe it, it is done. If you believe it, 
Somebody will lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, whatever your situation is, whatever your circumstances are, it is done right now. Oh, I wish somebody would lift up that praise on the Lord like it's happening. Praise Him like it's happening right now. Praise Him like it's taking place right now. It is done, it is done, it is done, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. It is done. In the name of Jesus. But if you got an issue in this house right now, you got a problem, would you just let it be known by uplifted hand? Let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, we believe what we're singing in this place. We believe what we're saying with our lips, God, we're believing it in our hearts right now. God, I believe that your power is going forth right now all over this sanctuary to every section, to every road, to every seat. 
God, you're doing a work right now. Whatever needed to be done, it is done. Whatever needed to be accomplished, it's being accomplished right now by the power, by the authority, by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? I'm glad to serve a great God. Amen. So thankful for the presence of the Lord that we feel. Thankful for our worship team. And so thankful that they can lead us into the presence of the Lord. They never cease to. We never. Uh, it's always amazing when you walk into a place and you feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Even without hearing a word. And then just goes into the song. And, and God's just doing wonders. Amen. 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 Um, failed to mention Sunday, but it's so great to have Anthony Adorno home. Amen. We are um, glad for him to uh, be able to serve our country. We're so thankful that he is doing that. He's home for a couple of weeks, and then he's going to go see the world. He's going to start his journey in Italy. Amen. So we're, we're going to pray that God keeps his hand on this young man as well. And so thankful for that. Let our children be dismissed. Amen. And all the parents said amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22. Everybody smile real big right now, right now. Smile at me. Might be the last time you smile tonight. Amen. But at least I know I got one out of you. Amen. Genesis 22. I'm going to read just two verses of Scripture. The Bible declares... That it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. The word tempt there means test. That God did test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I tell thee of. I'm preaching to you tonight. I'm talking where we've been studying the last couple of weeks. We'll keep going tonight. I'm talking about altars that alter. Amen. And tonight, I mean, last week we talked a little bit about uh, free will. Altars, altars that we build out of our own free will. It's important for us to get a hold of that concept that sometimes somebody doesn't need to say anything to you. You just need to bring it. Amen. But then you get to this passage of Scripture and it introduced what I'm going to call an altar of obedience. Amen. Amen. Uh, to be honest with you, it is easier, even though, even though we don't often just come and give an offering just because, out of our own free will, that, that's not as, we don't actually do that very often. We do a lot out of obligation. But as hard as it is to get someone to give a free will offering or a free will altar, it's that much more difficult to find someone that can build an altar of obedience. Because obedience means that I am not in charge. I told you you would have a hard time smiling at me tonight. Well, let's pray. Let's ask the Holy Ghost to talk to us, shall we? Lord Jesus, we need you. We need your spirit, your power, your blessing. I pray, God, that you would talk to us tonight. Let the Holy Ghost move on me, upon us. Help us, Lord, hear your word, and we'll be careful to give you praise. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Whew.
Abraham, I know you love it when I'm making promises to you. But how does it feel when I'm taking promises from you? Hmm. I mean, anybody can serve God when, when things are going good. But, I want, I, but it's God that's saying, I, I want to know if you can worship me when things are not good. Maybe I should not make this too easy on us. I don't want to water it down. I don't want to. I don't want it to be light on our shoulders. But hear me: when things are bad, can I still worship? Can I still be obedient to the presence of the Lord when things are bad? See, when 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 put in a position. That you are struggling in your faith. Or when put in a position when you are even questioning God. Let me tell you that that uh, commitment to obedience is much tougher when you're struggling in faith. And when you're questioning God. And, and you're questioning God and you're struggling in faith. And pastor says... I think you ought to do this. I'm going to tell you that's when obedience is tough. Because you can't see the end of the road at this point. And in fact, the last time you saw a light at the end of your tunnel, it was actually a, a freight train headed towards you. And then someone comes and says, well, you just need to hold on a little longer. And you, you want to look back and say, well, you don't know what I'm going through right now. Well, let me, let me put it this way. It's, it's, it's easy to pay your tithes when the money is right. <laughs> but when the money is wrong, you know what I'm talking about. If you've got plenty in the bank, oh, I can easily write that check today. It's, a, it's awful quiet in the house. When the questions are easier, it's simple to serve the Lord. But when the questions get harder, well, let me, let me try it this way. What about when the demand on your life gets greater? I mean, the questions are harder. God's saying, I want more. I need more out of your life. What about when there's more required out of you? Can you still be obedient? Did you know that with revelation comes responsibility? Jesus said it like this, Luke 12, 48, For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Oh, we, we love to get blessed and we love the blessing. But what about the requirement that comes along with the blessing? To whom men have committed much of him, they, they will ask the more. Amen. You, you get committed. Yeah, I want a raise. Yeah, okay, great. But you go ahead and get that raise and watch how your boss is asking for more of you. We want the blessing, but we're not sure. About the obedience. And God is, is asking Abraham. Abraham I want you to prove. That I'm testing you Abraham. I need to know. Do you love me the most? Do you love that promise? Or do you love me? And don't think God can't ask that question. Do you love the blessing I'm pouring out on you? Or do you actually just love me instead? What happens if you don't have the blessing any longer? It's what the, that's what the story of Job is about. Have you considered my servant Job? Amen. Have you considered Job? Hey, no, he's just serving you for the blessings. Take away the blessings and he'll curse you to your face. 
Well, I'm going to preach whether you get with me or not. He just wants to know, do you love that promise or do you love me? Abraham is now faced with a choice. It's a choice when you get to this place where you're building an altar of obedience. And your choice is this. Am I going to follow God's will or am I going to follow Abraham's will? Or am I going to follow your own will? Put your name in that spot. Do I follow God's will or do I follow my will? Abraham wants the blessing. Yes, he does. But as you read the story, it's obvious that, that he wants God more than he wants the blessing. And I'm just trying to be honest with some of you in this place. I don't know how you can progress in the kingdom of God if you're not going to follow the will of God. I don't know how. I don't know how you're going to just continue to play the halfway game with God. And give him half of yourself and hold back the other half instead of giving him all of your heart. And follow the complete will of God for your life. There is no halfway following him. To follow him halfway is to be out of the will of God. You can't can't have it both ways. You can't serve God and man. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't do both at the same time and survive. You've got to pick one or the other. You've got to either be obedient to God or obedient to your own will. One or the other is going to win out. Jesus said, listen, here's a great commandment from him, Matthew 22, 37. He said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He didn't say with part of your soul, with part of your heart and with part of your mind. He said, if you're going to love me and you're going to serve me, if you're going to worship me, if you're going to sacrifice to me, it's got to be with all a l l last time i checked in the greek that meant everything all of you not just a part of me but all of me has to be given unto the lord you got to make a decision am i going to go god's way or am i going to keep going my way once abraham makes his decision He starts making this decision to follow God's will. And he wants to walk in God's path. But hear me. The moment you decide to do that, I'm just going to be honest with you. Things did not get easier for Abraham when he said, not my will, but your will be done. I know you think that once you start walking after God's will, that everything is just going to get perfect. It's going to be perfect perfect that your commitment to obedience tonight uh, hear me uh, is just going to put you on a path of perfection but hear me pro- rather than put you on a path to perfection let me tell you the moment you commit to the pathway of God it's got probably going to put you in a process of pain rather than a process of perfection Now the pain will end up bringing out the perfection in you because it's a testing time when you get to a place and God says, I need you to get a hold of this. You've got, Abraham, you've got to be obedient to me. It doesn't matter what you want, Abraham. It matters what I want. This is strong. I get that. This is old-fashioned. You better understand it. But I'm here to tell you that tonight, imagine... Imagine for a moment with me, the moment he says, I'm going to go with you, God. I'm going to follow you. And God says, I want you to, I, I want your son. And we're getting ready to head to a mountain so that we can sacrifice him. Imagine the turmoil in the mind of Abraham when he starts up that mountain and he already knows the fate of his son when he gets to the top of the mountain. I'm going to follow God. But God is asking now for the, for the promise back. I'm, I'm trying to be, be obedient, God. So, so why, why is this getting harder? 
Oh, come on. Nobody else ever asked that question? Are there any honest people here tonight? What a difficult journey it must have been. Think of the loneliness as he's traveling up the side of that mountain. A desolate trip. Please don't ever get the idea that walking, with, walking in the will of God is without hard decisions. Without difficult times of trials. And without tests coming into your life. Some people actually believe that I'm going to know I'm in the will of God. And it's going to be confirmed by how smooth the path is. By how easy the transitions are. By how few of the problems I face. I'm not saying that God doesn't part the Red Sea. But hear me. Before that happens... You're probably going to be surrounded on two sides by mountains. And Pharaoh's going to be chasing you to the Red Sea. Sometimes we only focus on the end result of what's happened to us. Wow, God made the way smooth. And man, it was just like everything fell into place. But what about the months of agony that you spent trying to finally get to the place where God could do what He wanted and you got your hands off of it? Let me inform somebody that the will of God is the will of God. Whether the sun is shining or the rain is falling, it's still the will of God. Sometimes it may be the will of God and the sun is shining. But many times it's still going to be the will of God. And you're going to be in the middle of a rainstorm. And I feel like I've been sent to this place tonight because God wants and God is calling some of you under the sound of my voice. May not be for everybody here, but somebody here, you're looking for deeper places in the kingdom. And some of you right now are standing in a valley of decision. And God wants more out of your life than even you want out of your life. But as, but, but as you have experimented in times past. I'm preaching to somebody right now. I'm, sp- I'm reading somebody's mail. Because in, in your times uh, and your experiments in times past of trying to follow of God, you simply started trying to follow Him and then you begin to run into a few issues. You've tasted a life of pursuing God's presence, but things didn't turn out the way you hoped they would. I'm preaching to you. Pastor, I really tried. I really did. But how many can can identify with this? But the more I pray, the more we're fighting. Hello? I went to an altar to pray. And I prayed three days in a row trying to start morning prayer. And then all that could happen was my wife and I started fighting left and right. Hello? Uh, uh, You've got these moments where you're trying to move forward. The closer, some of you parents, the closer I get to the Lord, the more my kids act up. They act like they're not even interested in church. And here I am trying to get closer. Well, God sent me here with a message to the hesitators. Quit listening to the voice and the lies of the enemy. The the enemy's trying to tell you that if that's really the will of God, then these things would not be happening to you. Oh, it couldn't be further from the truth. Come on, if I was, I would be worried if I had smooth sailing everywhere I went. Because if I didn't have to fight the devil every day, I'd be worried, I'd be worried sick that he wasn't after me. You know what? The good news for you is if you're fighting against the devil every day of your life, that means he don't have you yet. Those people that sit back in their easy chair, oh, I ain't got one thing to worry about. There's no devils fighting me or my family. I'm worried about you. Why? Because if he's not fighting you, I'm worried about where you're at. God's calling. Hear me, it'll take you places 
that don't make your personal preference list. God calls us and now he takes me into some place. I didn't choose this. I get to sign up for three places I'd like to go. Didn't get one of them. Hello? Doesn't mean God's not in it. Look at Luke 8. Came to pass on a certain day. He went into a ship with his disciples. Jesus did. He said unto them, underline this, let us go over. That's the will of God. We're going over. We're going over to the other side of the lake. And so they launched forth, going into the will of God. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and, they, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. They're in the will of God and in jeopardy. Don't tell me you can't follow God's voice and everything's always going to be just fine. I'm sure it started off fine, but somewhere in the middle of the night, the wind started raging. The wind started blowing. The Bible says, and they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, rebuked the wind, the raging water, and caused there to be a calm. Why are we all panicked sometimes? We're trying to find the will of God. Oh, this must not be it. Look at everything going on around us. Why don't you just check in with him for a moment? Instead of making some decision to go off someplace and do something else when God's saying, I'm just testing you right now. I want to give you something greater, but you're not passing the test. He said, where is your faith? Listen, God, he calls us out of comfort zones. Come on, hang on to his word. Because if he said, let us go over, if he said go over, you can't go under. You're going over. You're not going under. The only way to go under is to get out of the boat. He asked. He's looking for it. Somebody just to be obedient, no matter where it takes me, no matter what you ask of me. Can I take this a little deeper on some of you right now? Luke 18, a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None, none is good save one, that is God. He said, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill. Do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said all these things. The young man said, I've kept these from my youth up. Jesus heard these things and said unto him, yet you lack one thing. This is what I'm asking for out of you. I want you to sell all that you have, give it to the poor. And he said, you're going to have treasure in heaven and then come and follow me. Now watch the word. When he heard this. He was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Look here. The Lord is asking him to give up the one thing that obviously meant more to him than anything else. I'll be religious. They'll call me religious. I'll take, I'll take on every action that I possibly can. In fact, since I've been young, I've been doing everything religious in my life. And the Lord says, hold on. Let's cut to the chase. There's something in you that you don't need. It's going to wreck you unless you get rid of it. And he said, I want you to sell it. And I want you to give it to the poor. And he said, in doing that, you're going to become very rich in heaven. The Lord was asking him just to give up one thing. Let let me talk about obedience here. Because obedience isn't hearing something that you want to do and do it. I'm preaching tonight and I'm not afraid to say what needs to be said. Because I'm trying to be obedient. But it gets tiring when you see people that only do good when they make eye contact with a pastor. Sitting around, 
See, pastor, get up. Let's get straight. Let's do something good. Hello? I'm trying to be nice. Lord set a watch over my lips. Obedience isn't hearing something you, you, you want to do and then do it. Obedience is hearing something you don't want to do. But you do it because you were asked to do it. I was asked, so I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to tell you right now that there's a lot of people that can call me pastor. But I tell you how I know if I'm really your pastor. Is everybody okay? If someone is really submitted to me as a pastor and my leadership. You want me to tell you how I know? When I ask the hard thing, they may not understand it, but they do it anyhow. Even though they don't understand it, they do it anyhow. I've found as a pastor, when people are interested in building an altar of obedience, the Lord is always included in their decision and their pastor. I'm I'm just going to stand here and be honest with you. I do not want to run anybody's life. I do not. No, thank you. You are a mess. I will stay with my own life. And I'll try to run my own life. But what I will do and I offer all the time is just a little bit of godly advice to help you run your own life. Because ultimately, you got to make your own decision. Because you cannot grab my coattail and go to heaven with me. I'm going to go. But if you go, it's going to be because you made up your mind, I'm going too. And all I'm offering you is just a little bit of advice on how to make sure you get to heaven. So why? Why do we sometimes... I don't know how people make large, life-changing decisions without involving God in the process. Prayer and godly counsel should always be on the top of my list before I make a decision. Young people, you better hear me right now because you've got to make a big decision one day in your life of who you might marry. Shame on you if you try to even date somebody. And didn't even run it past your pastor. I'll tell you what. I, I'm so fearful of what the Lord could do. Listen. God bless me. You want that kind of a blessing in marriage. But I'm so fearful of what some of you sometimes fool around with. And play around with in your life. That you're going to ruin your life because of who you choose. You would think for a moment. if I, I, don't, I shouldn't even be texting that girl if I, my pastor doesn't even know it. If I'm texting her and my pastor doesn't know it, shame on me. Why? Because you're bringing upon you something you may not want. And I may know something about them that you don't know. Good chance I do know something about them that you don't know. Well, hallelujah, anyhow. You're just trying to make these life. I want to be a grown up. I get you want to choose. Well, go ahead, choose who you want to choose. Go ahead, do everything. You know what the Bible says that men love darkness rather than light. Why can't you come and bring that number to your pastor? Why can't you bring that and get it out in the open and say, "Yeah, I'm talking to them." Why? Because it's in darkness. Is why. It should be celebrated. Oh, I know what it is. You don't want pastor to say no. So I figure, oh, it's better to ask forgiveness than it is permission. That's a lie from the devil. 
Again, I'm not trying to run your life. I don't want to run your life. I don't want to... I don't want you to blame me for ruining your life either. And if I don't say what I'm saying right now, one of these days you're going to look at me and say, Pastor, why didn't you tell me? And I'm going to say, why didn't you ask? You didn't ask. Well, I told you I wasn't going to. I got some mamas and daddies smiling, but I ain't got no young people smiling All of us, I know, Pastor, you're picking on us. About time. Going off. They, they're going to be young people tonight, I promise you, Brother True, you, Pastor. There's going to be young people. They'll be crying all the way home tonight. Why is Pastor picking on me like that? He was looking right at me. Well, obviously, I don't know who's texting who, or I wouldn't be preaching like I'm preaching right now. Should I keep going? Hey, when, when I got thumbs up from her, I don't care what the rest of y'all think. I had someone tell me this one time. They said, they said you know... Speaking of your wife, he said, you can preach to 10,000 people, and they can think you're a hero, and she can think you're a zero, and you lost. He said, he, he looked at me, and he said, but you could, you could preach to 10,000 people, and they can think you're a zero, and she can think you're a hero, and you won. Good. I've got thumbs up right now. I'm so far off my notes, I don't even know how to get back onto it. And that's when you know it's the Holy Ghost. See, all of us, when we, when we neglect the counsel that we need, sometimes, I'm sure, Abraham, you put yourself in Abraham's shoes, he could have felt slighted. He could have felt mistreated. Oh, pastor just doesn't like young people. He just don't want us to have any fun. Look what I'm having to give up. Oh, and my parents are hearing this right now. Now they're going to require something of me. I hope you do require something of them. Look, look. We start talking about, look what I've given up. Look at my sacrifice. Well, pastor's being on, he's harder on me than he is on anybody else. Abraham didn't respond like that. God said, I want it all. Give me that cell phone. That's what God's saying. Erase those girls' numbers off that phone. I'm a married man. I don't text ladies without my wife being grouped into the text. Maybe it'd be a good practice for some of you young people to group your parents into your text messages. Why? So that you have integrity. So that you have accountability. Oh, no, no, no. Let me keep it in secret. Let me keep it in secret. That's why we got drama in the youth group. And then parents getting mad at each other. Well, your daughter did this to my daughter and your son did this to my son. I'm just way off the page right now. Well, you would have already taken care of this problem at home if you'd have been looped in to the text message. We know we, you, you're hearing their side of the story, and they're, they're obviously shading it to their side of the story. I found out when you're dealing with two young people, and they're at, at odds with each other, I'll tell you what, what, here parents, let me give you some advice. All teenagers lie. And I know you're saying, well, my kid don't lie. Yes, they do. And they are good at it. They're so good at lying, you think they're telling the truth all the time. I got. Well, I had one. You said, "How did you raise your kids?" I have one philosophy: Do not trust a teenager. Don't trust them. They, 
Well, they don't even have a device. Their friends do. I don't even know how they're talking to them. I don't even know. I tell you how. You're letting them hang out with somebody that's got a phone. See, you guys thought I was born yesterday. I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. Woo! I'm sorry if you're a guest here. I'm normally not this way. You come back on Sunday, I'll give you a really nice fluffy message. But this is Wednesday night, and we kind of just take care of some business here. I'm just trying to get some people into obedience so that we can all get to heaven together. This is Abraham. He's saying, God's saying, I want it all. I want your cell phone. I I want your iPad. I want your friends list. I want to be grouped into your messages. That's what God's saying. Give me your son. Give me your promise. Give me everything. I want it all. Give it all to me. And I'll take it. And I'll. Well. But Abraham's not like that. It's not his reaction. He had an altar. That altered him. He says. Abide here. He said I and a lad. We're getting ready to go yonder to worship. Here's the, here, here's the key. Obedience always gives you a different perspective. Yeah, I, I didn't think I told you I was not going to have any, very many friends. But if you will follow leadership in your life. No matter what they ask of you, how they ask it or what they ask, you say, well, i got to live my own life. I'm, I want you to live your own life, but you need to have some sound advice. Because the hardest, uh, the most expensive school that you're ever going to go to is the school of experience. And experience costs you a lot. You ought to listen to some people that have already been to that school, have already paid that price. And obedience gives you a different perspective. We need people that will put their personal agenda on hold and say, God, speak to me. Trying to get the train back on the rails. Abraham trusted God with the outcome. Come on, just trusting your leadership. Just trusting people, spiritual leaders in your life. Just trusting them to give them Complete veto power over what you're doing. If you're doing things right, I promise you, you you're going to be fine. You're not going to hear no's. You're going to hear a bunch of gotcha, you got your back, go on, move on. You're in the will of God. People are going to be surrounding you, lifting you up on their shoulders, helping you get to these things. But when you are trying to get through life without the obedient factor in your heart, your mind, when you are trying to get through things, hear me. So Abraham, he starts trusting God and trusting God and trusting God ultimately. When he trusts God, he gets God's attention. This this altar of obedience. When when you start walking into certain things in certain life, certain places saying, I just don't know. Find, Find some people that you can trust. Young people, you know how to find someone you can trust? They're in an altar. Then you can talk to them about spiritual things. Don't look for somebody that's got their arms crossed and you don't ever see them moving in the spirit. Look for somebody that's worshiping. Look for somebody that's not afraid to pray. Look for somebody that can help you spiritually speaking. There's nothing wrong with with man's wisdom. Man's wisdom will get you a long ways. But what we need more than man's wisdom is a wisdom that comes from heaven. We need great direction. You got decisions to make? Get in an altar. You got? You want to know who? uh, You you know? Want to know who you're going to be dating one day? Get in an altar. Young man, hear me. If if she can't cry in the altar, stay away from her. She can't mess her hair up. Stay away from her. Young ladies, hear me. If he can't can't cry in an altar, you don't want him either. It's not not just how they dress. It's not what they look like. They're going to get old. They're going to lose their hair. 
Yes, some of them will get fat. That's when you're going to be glad you made a commitment at an altar. Hello? Well, I may have crossed the line there. This is turning into a disaster. I'm just kidding. I love it. You see, when, you're, when you preach a hard message, it's best to have people laughing towards the end of it. Because that way they're not as mad at you. See, if, if Genesis 22, he's got the knife in his hand. It's in the air. And God speaks. Lay not thy hand upon the lad. Don't do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes. There's a ram caught in the thicket by the horns. Abraham went, took the ram, offered him for a burnt offering instead of his son. He found the place. He called it Jehovah Jireh. The angel called out to him the second time. And he says to him, by myself. Verse 16, I swore. I swore and saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and you have not withheld anything from me, your only son. He said that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Watch. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Here's the kick. Because thou hast obeyed. Not sacrificed. Because you obeyed. Not how great you are at singing. But because you obeyed. Not because you got multi-talents. But because you obeyed. You get the blessing because you obeyed. Because you built an altar of obedience. You want the windows of heaven to begin to open up in your life? I know I've been picking on young people, but let's talk about, let's talk about us. You want God to open up the windows in your life? You want blessings upon blessings to be poured out upon you? you got to figure out how to build an altar of obedience and if you, come on somebody and if God's calling you to do something you don't question it you just move in it if your leadership is calling you to a deeper place quit questioning it you just get in there and follow it your obedience is going to bring a far greater reward than just you getting your way I've had People, countless, too many to even number, with my two hands. That's about as far as I could count sometimes. I've had that, at least that many people come to me and say, I feel like God's doing something different in my life. And I've repeatedly, I don't always, unless I really feel something or a check in my spirit, I will not say much going either way because I do not want to run people's lives. Ultimately, you got to do what you feel like is right for your family. But for me, I try to give sound, godly wisdom advice to people. On occasion, I'm telling you, it's been many occasions where I have felt a check in the Holy Ghost and said, I do not feel like this is right for you now. There have been very few that have said, okay, I'm shutting it down. I'm going to wait until God either opens the door or something changes here. Many of them have gone on. And can I tell you, many of them, if not all of them, maybe even most of them, I could say, have went on to smaller and lesser things and have lost a lot more than they ever thought they would gain by doing something against their leadership in the church. 
I don't know how many times I've even preached that thought. But I can tell you, it is your obedience that brings multiplied blessings of God into your life. Your obedience. Because thou hast done this thing. Because you have done it. You have not hesitated, Abraham. You, do, you took the hard task. You took what seemed to be an impossible task. You took that task and you brought it to me and said, here it is. I'm open. I'm honest. I want to be, for, I want to be forthright. I, want to, I, want, I don't want any dark places. I want you to know, God, that I'm going to obey your voice no matter what you ask me to do. Come on, somebody. If, if pastor is to is say, well, I think, you need to, I think you need to do this for a little bit, then do it with all your heart for a little while. I, I've tried to bring some people and restore them back in the ministry, and I just ask them for, for a simple thing. I said, just sit on the front row and act like everything's okay and worship God like in nobody's business and just get back in touch with learning how to be a Christian again and God will elevate you back to where you were. I can tell you I've said it over and over and over and over again. I have yet to really have anybody do it to the, to the place I've asked them to go. Most of them still lost can't find their way. I'm just telling you, there's something about this obedience thing. Be obedient to the Lord. And God, God allows me to be your pastor, to just speak into your life. I've, I've, I've said it once, I'm going to say it five or six times tonight. I do not want to run your life. I'm not trying to ruin your life. I don't, I'm not on a power struggle. I'm not sitting up here trying to think of ways that I can calculate how to get you to do certain things here and do certain things there. That's not who I am. I just want to help you get to heaven. And I just got to do what I've been called to do. Preach the word of God and be strong with it. And not, not be afraid. Preach without fear. And without favor. Hallelujah. I, can't, can't, I don't have favorites. And I'm not going to be afraid to do it. But hear me. This obedience is top. It's got to be our top priority. God help me to build an altar that says yes Lord. Whatever you want from me. I want to be willing to do it. Whatever my pastor asks of me. I want to be willing to do it. Whatever they're saying to me. Whatever my youth pastor. Come on whatever he's saying to me. Come on young people. I need to be willing to do it. Whatever they're doing. Whatever you're trying to pull out of my life. Just do it. Whatever you got to do. I was a mess before I got here. And I don't want to be a mess any longer. So keep pulling me out of my my ways and keep pulling me out of my will and keep pulling me towards God's will. Come on, is there anybody in this house tonight that you will lift your hands and say, Lord, I don't want to be run by my own will. I want to be run by the will of God for my life. Come on. Would you stand all over this house right now? I believe the Holy Ghost wants to talk to some hearts in this place. I believe the Holy Ghost wants to minister to some people in this house in a powerful way there is a radical change that's about to happen in some of your lives if you will heed the word of God and you will begin to move in a place where the Lord can begin to talk to you and when you hear those voices when you hear the voice of God when you hear him speak to you when you hear him open up your heart when you hear him open up your mind and begin to speak to you I want you to just say yes Lord I'm going to do it I'm willing I'm willing, I'm willing. Can you lift your hands one more time right now? I believe the Lord wants to speak to some people in this place. You're all over this building right now. You're in this house. God's calling you to a deeper place. If you're in this place right now and God's calling you to a deeper place in Him, I want you to not be afraid. Nobody's going to think anything bad of you. It's not if you come tonight that you weren't being obedient. It's that I'm going tonight because I want the Lord to know I'm going to continue to be. Or I'm going to even lift it up another level of obedience. Come on, somebody. It's my heart's desire for each one of you to make it. Young people, please understand. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at anybody. I just want to help you get to heaven. I just care enough about you. I love you that much that I'll say something. I'm not used to that, Pastor. Maybe, maybe you need to get used to it. Come on, that's what's wrong. Everybody keeps making you feel good about who you are. 
when you got to tear yourself down every once in a while in the presence of the Lord and let God break you down in His presence so that you don't get too big for your own self. Come on, some of you in this house right now, you're in valleys of decisions. You're trying to make some decisions. Oh, it would be good for you to run it past. It would be good for you to take some time and say, Pastor, i got to talk to you for a moment. I've just been thinking about some things, and I want you to help me pray about it. Come on, don't, don't come to Pastor and say, I've made up my mind. I just want to inform you. You need to come to Pastor and say, I'm, I've just been, I've been tossing, anguishing, but I, I know I need to talk to you about it. I'm going to talk to you about it. Let's start praying about it. Let's see what God can do through your obedience. I wonder if the windows of heaven might start opening up in some of your hearts if you'll just say, yes, Lord. Come on, I believe the Holy Ghost wants to talk to somebody specific in this place. All over this house, you hear my voice. God's getting ready to speak to you right now. The voice of the Lord is getting ready to call you. He's getting ready to call some things out in your heart, in your mind that you need to get right. You need to get it back in line with obedience. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. Come on, that's it. Let his voice begin to speak to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. Come on, Holy Ghost. That's it. I believe it, God. I believe you're talking to them right now. You're speaking to some young ladies right now. You're speaking to some young men. You're speaking to some parents right now. I've been too lenient. We got to get back in the will of God. Come on, don't let them chase things that are not important. Let's lead them by example. Let's show them the right things to chase. The presence of God. The unity of the Spirit. To be in good standing in the church. To always have the favor of my pastor. To always have the favor of God and favor of my pastor upon my life. If if I can't get right with my pastor, I may not be right with the master. I got to get it right. We got to get it right. I got to be obedient. I want to be obedient to the will of God. What's God asking from you? What's God asking from you tonight, young people? Come on, what's, what's wrong? What's God asking of you tonight, parents? What's He speaking to your heart saying, you got to get back to this? You got to get back to some stuff. You got to make some, you got to make this a priority for your family. You got to make this a priority. You got to get your family back focused. Come on, what's He speaking to you, moms and dads? What's He speaking to you? Are you going to say yes? Are you going to say yes? Are you going to say yes? Oh, I know it's fun when he's making promises, but what about when he's taking promises? Come on, that's it. Holy Ghost, speak to us right now. I want to follow your direction. I want to follow your will. Come on, let him talk to you right now. Why don't you just pray like that? Pray, God, I want to follow your direction. Come on, in your own words, I want to follow your will, Lord Jesus. I want to go where you lead me. I want to walk in your, your pathways. I want to do the things you're asking me to do. I want to go the directions you're asking me to go. Come on, that's it. Give it to him right now. Say, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I'm giving it to you right now, God. I'm laying it down at your feet. I'm laying this down at your feet right now. Empty me of anything that's not like you, not like you. Empty me of anything that's not like you. Come on, let him talk to you. You still got a few moments here tonight. There's a few moments left. Fill me with your glory, Lord, yeah. Fill me with your power. We 
with your power. With your power. With your power. Yeah. Fill me with your presence. Woo. Lord, I long to be like you. Fill me with your goodness. Your love that has no Give me direction, oh God. Give us direction, oh God. Give us direction. Give us direction in this house right now. Empty me. That's not like you. Come on, that ought to be your prayer right now. Fill me, Lord, with your glory. to be filled with your power and that's it if you empty yourself of your will and pray God not my will but thy will be done like you yeah Commit some things to you tonight. Won't you have your way in my heart? We gotta commit some things to the Lord tonight. I leave it at this altar. Right where you're at, right where you're at right now. I give it all. I want you to commit some things to the Lord right now. Whatever He's been asking you for, whatever He's been talking to you about tonight, all of those things that He's been listing in your mind of those things. God, I'm going to commit them to you right now. Come on, would you commit them to the Lord? I'm giving them to you. It's not my will. I'm giving it up right now. I'm letting go of it right now. I'm turning it over right now. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next week or so, maybe in the next week, I felt prompted to do this not long ago. I'm not forcing, I'm not going to force something on people, but um, I'm literally going to put together a pastor, a, a guideline of pastor's expectations for dating. Okay? I've never put that to paper. But I'm going to put something on paper. Because if parents, if you're waiting because you don't want to be the bad guy, I'm getting ready to give you an excuse to say here is what pastor's expecting out of you. And I agree with it. So we're going to do this in our house. Now hear me, parents, I'm passing it out. It's not something mandatorily that I'm going to pass and push on everybody, but here's, my, here's, the, here's the deal. Don't bring me your kids' problems if you're not following these guidelines.
Because if you're being, if, if you see what I, I, I'm telling you, my kids, my girls, they weren't allowed to date till they were 18. They turned 18. And I told them they weren't allowed to date till they got an AA. Because I, I just kept moving the line. Because I'm like, you're not, you're not mature enough to date. Let's go a little further. I, I pushed it back further and further. And uh, I did it for a reason. Not because I didn't trust them. Because I didn't trust all those guys that were out there. But I didn't trust them either because they were still young. I, I just can't see putting a nuclear bomb in some kid's hand and saying, go have, go have fun, you know. And that's about the equivalent of letting somebody that's too young go out and date somebody. So I'm going to put it in paper because I feel like there's some people that really could use it. And then there's some people that maybe you don't want it, but that's tough. It's coming now because I'm tired of dealing with your drama. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. You'll live through it. This is, this is one of those things. As soon as I put something on paper, somebody's going to find loopholes. But I'll do my best to be as thorough as I possibly can with what I like and what I expect out of young people. It's some of the things that I like to see. And it's only for their protection. Look at the world that we live in. We've got smartphones and FaceTime and Snapchat. And I don't know what else there is out there. Parents, I don't even know. You You know they can send each other picture messages and they'll disappear off their phone and then you don't even know what happened. And you, we're letting them do it. Well, bless God. I better get out of the microphone. 